of you worked from home before you had your, your children or before you became a mom? <laughs> awesome. I, uh, so I did as well. And um, before I had my daughter, you know, I can tell you that I had all of these romantic ideas about what working from home with my baby or, or children would be like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I'd always wanted to be a mom, and I'd worked in Vancouver as a doula. And um, women in Uganda, where I sort of spent most of, of my time, everyone carried their babies everywhere. Women like these women uh, in our women's income generating group in Uganda, they bring their babies to the birth house every day to, to work with them. And so, you know, I thought that I would, uh, would be no different. I would just sort of, you know, continue on running our maternity center and uh, going to meetings and, and managing and running our organization with Satya strapped to my back. Um, and I, of course, learned very quickly um, once she came into the world that that just was not going to work and it wasn't going to happen. And so it wasn't much more than sort of a few months after I returned from my maternity leave that we hired a, a full-time nanny. <laughs> One of the things that I love the most about running an organization that works in the global south is the constant need for self-inquiry and um, self-improvement. Something we all do so, so often as mothers as well. And, you know, the international nonprofit field is a really interesting one because there's a lot of sacrifice, there's a lot of guilt, um, and there's a ton, a ton of burnout that, that happens working on the ground in areas like Uganda. There's very, very little recognition. Um, and the most important thing that you can do for your work and for the organization is to actually remove yourself from the picture, to sort of get yourself out of your own way, so to speak, um, and to understand that it's, it's really not about you. It's about selfless service, and that takes total, total surrender and a huge amount of focus on finding joy in those little everyday things. And, you know, when I became a mom, what I realized is that there really is no other better training manual for becoming a mom. You know, looking at surrender and finding joy in those everyday things needs to be at the very top of our, of our list. And so often we get stuck in the logical and the day-to-day -day that we, we're not able to sort of remove ourselves and really get into the, the uh, intuition, the feeling. So years ago, when I was um, sort of getting Shanti Uganda up and, and running, I was also a Vancouver uh, a doula and, uh, and a yoga teacher. And I ran a, a yoga studio in Vancouver. And it was on the side that I would sort of work uh, to, to sort of grow the organization and start up the organization. And I was on a very, very fast path to burnout. You know, it was one of those things where you're doing far too many things all at once, and so nothing is flowing and, and succeeding and moving forward. And it was really ironic because all of my work was focused on helping other people um, and my yoga students to find, find that happiness and that, and that place of, of uh, balance in their own lives. But I, I knew that my deepest pass passion was to make this organization thrive. And so it took a lot of letting go and um, sort of surrender to something much greater. And I decided to leave the yoga studio, leave my teaching career, and focus 100% on Shanti Uganda so that I could, could really allow the organization to thrive. So what I decided to do was sort of leave all of that, take out a personal loan, and, uh, and sort of give it 100%. And it was a really scary, scary decision to, to make. But I decided that if in six months I wasn't able to secure funding for the organization, that I'd let it all go and, uh, and just sort of release it. You know, and it was in that letting go and that total surrender that within two months we were able to secure our first large grant and I was able to sort of create a, a salaried position for myself. And I think it's something that happens for us so often as moms as well, you know, untying those knots that, that keep us stuck so that we can really find that place where we're able to shine. 
I remember the day where I was on my way to Uganda to begin uh, to break ground and to begin the construction process for the birth house. My husband and I were scheduled to be there for four months and in that time we were meant to clear the land, begin and finish the construction of two large buildings that would become the Shanti Uganda birth house. And I called up the president of our board um, and said, Kristen, I just want to let you know, I have no idea how to build a birth house. <laughs> no idea. Um, and her response was, well, it's a fine time to tell me that now. <laughs> and it'll probably be the hardest thing that you will ever do. But at the end of it, there will be a maternity center with thousands of women from the community that come to give birth to their babies. And it was like that moment when you're giving birth and you look your midwife or your care provider in the eyes as if to say, is this for real? <laughs> and it's moments like these that allow ourselves or allow us to really shine our brightest and be in that place where we are the most true to ourselves. So this was the birth house in 2009 uh, when we had cleared the land and laid the, the foundation. And this is the Shanti Uganda birth house today. <laughs> so before I became a mom, life was a little bit more like the Constant Gardener or Beyond Borders, you know those sort of Hollywood movies where it really seems incredibly exotic and adventurous, um, but it's actually very, very tiring. Constant Ebola outbreaks, um, you know, an armed revolt in the, in the village next door. And then Satya came and everything changed because there wasn't anything in the world that I was willing to put in front of her. So when I went back to work, my lack of available time made it that I just wasn't willing to allow anything into our lives that wasn't joyful. And in the midst of juggling work and family and being the best mom that I could be, it was a realization that the important thing was to make everything joyful, those little things that we do every single day. I know that there are a lot of women out in the audience tonight that do service work or volunteer, and we're really great at it because we're very, very good at prioritizing, right? And the thing is, is that it only works if it's joyful. And if we're really, truly able to let it go and, and surrender at the end of the day. This is Satya and I at the uh, postnatal room in the birth house. The mom that we were with had just had her baby. She was 17 years old. So my hope for us as mothers is that we're able to find that one thing that makes us shine, the thing that we're the most passionate about in life, and then surrender completely to it so that we can let our light shine and really be in that place where our heart has the most ability to change the world and bring joy into our communities. Thank you so much.